Right, okay guys, welcome to this week's Friday Waffle. I don't actually know where the camera is, I think it's there. I'm looking over there and I think it's actually there. Yeah, um, welcome to the Friday Waffle and firstly, a very Merry Christmas to each and every person. I hope you're having a really nice day. Hopefully by the point that you're actually watching this video, I am, uh, I've eaten too much and probably drunk too much. So anyway, yeah. I'm not going to do a year's recap because that's going to be for next week's, uh, that's going to be the kind of New Year uh, waffle. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to kind of, it's hard to get to Christmas, you know, and not reflect on the last sort of, you know, what would I say, in the last 10 months. It's been, uh, it's been crap. You know, let's be honest, it has been a crap 10 months. There's not really been anything you know i'm talking about from a sort of world perspective there's really been nothing to celebrate i mean i think the only thing that i would say has been i wouldn't say it's been a plus point but what's been nice is given that sort of just how bad this year has been with everything um there's been a real sense of community i feel with a lot of people not everybody because you know there's still there's still a lot of people out there in society who really don't care about anyone else. Um, but I think, you know, there has been a lot of sort of positive things as well. But like I said, I'm not going to dwell on, dwell on that just now. This is all about Christmas. Um, hopefully you can see my uh, my little tree that I put up a couple of weeks ago. It took my daughter and I all of about 10 minutes to put it up. Um, so yeah, that's I've, uh, I finished up yesterday which would be Thursday, I finished up from work and I'm off until uh, the 4th of January. So I've, I've got to say, I was really looking forward to breaking up um, just to kind of, just to have a bit of time, you know, um, not so much a bit of time, but just to have, well, some time just to kind of chill out and more importantly, not get up at half past six every morning. Um, <laughs> I really, really do struggle getting up early. It's not so much the getting up early, I think the fact that you're getting up and it's pitch dark, it just feels like the middle of the night. You wake up and it could be four o'clock in the morning, it could be two o'clock in the morning, or it could be quarter to seven in the morning. And nine times out of 10, when I wake up, I think, oh, please make it five o'clock in the morning. I find out it's like five to six and I'm getting up in half an hour's time. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of being off, just chilling out. I'm going to try and get some uh, some videos uh, so it's stockpiled. We have got a few videos uh, planned for next week. I've got a few videos which I need to get edited. Um, looking forward to putting them out. Before I start, subscribers, what the hell is going on? Seriously, what the hell is going on? As of about a week ago, my subscribers numbers were, there were about 3,000 just under 3,300 and then a couple of days later it kind of jumped to about 3,310 and then the next day it went back under 3,300. Now as of about five minutes ago my subscribers are at 3,400 They've jumped up. I've literally gained about 80 or 90 subscribers in the last two or three days. Now, I'm beginning to think it must be some sort of glitch um, because I, I just physically don't get that many subscribers. Um, I mean, the number sort of the subscriber increase over the last probably six months has been really, really slow. Um, I'm not complaining about it, it's just a fact, it has been very slow, in fact, if anything, I've probably kind of, I've been losing more than I've been gaining, but for some real weird reason in the last couple of days, um, it's just been jumping up mental. I mean, tonight I had a look at it, and it was 3,380, and then I went away for about 20 minutes, came back, refreshed the page, and it's gone up by 10. So there's there's one of three things. One, it's a complete it's just crap. There's YouTube I've got it wrong and probably tomorrow it'll go back down to what it should be. Two, some big YouTuber has given me a shout out. If you have, let me know. In fact, you know what, can I ask you any new subscriber that's watching this, 
I would be really, really, uh, I would really appreciate it if you could let me know how you came to find out about my channel. I'm genuinely interested to know how people, you know, if I have picked up 80, 90 subscribers in two days, which is the biggest number I've ever picked up in such a short space of time, I would love to know how that's come about. So if you have just recently subscribed in the last couple of days, please let me know. The third thing it could possibly be is uh, I've started doing podcasts. Now, I'm not I'm not doing any... One, one thing I want to get clear is I will never do a podcast. Well, I shouldn't say never. Um, that's probably a bit, a bit strong. I don't plan to make a podcast and it's only in podcast forum. You know, I'll always... Uh, I'll always be doing it as a video and then I'll, I'll make it as a podcast as well. Now saying that, it could be possible that I may do a podcast further down the line and what I'll do is I can just upload it onto YouTube anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just, it was something I'd thought about for doing it for a long, long time. And if I'm being honest, I physically didn't have the where for all of the knowledge to how to actually get it going. But I just, you know what, I watched a YouTube video uh, a couple of weeks ago and it's fairly simple, so uh, yeah, it's, it's all good, it's all good, because um, I mean, I do think that something like this, the Friday Waffle, it lends itself better to a podcast, you don't have to see this, you don't have to see my face at all, it's more about just, the, you know, what's been spoken about, um, so yeah, if you are a new subscriber, please let me know, put a wee comment down below, let me know how you came to find out about my channel because I am I'm I'm really interested to know why it's jumped up. I'm, I honestly I firmly believe that there's a bit of a flip uh, a flip uh, a bit of a kind of a, a mistake in the algorithm whatever it is and I'm sure I'll probably log in tomorrow and it'll have gone back down to like you know it's dropped by a hundred because I just I, I never ever pick up that many. It just doesn't make any sense. So yeah, that was uh, subscribers and podcasts. Anything else gaming wise? I've you know what? I've simply not had the time to be playing any games. Uh, I've been busy making uh, videos. I recorded uh, a video with uh, Tony Temple, my good mate, Missile Command World Champion. Bit of name drop in there. Um, you've seen Tony a few times. He's a bit of a regular on the channel, and Tony was basically uh, I wouldn't say promoting his book, but I wanted to talk. I contacted Tony. I says, look. Would you like to come on the channel and just talk about the book because it's a superb, it's an absolutely fantastic book. Um, the only thing is, I said to Tony, it's a pity we hadn't done this two or three weeks before um, and then people would hopefully have watched the video and thought, I'm going to buy that, get that book for my Christmas. But uh, yeah, that'll be coming out. I've also got the Sid Show, Sid Show number seven is going to be coming out uh, beginning in next week as well and we've got a few other videos I recorded another video last night which will be coming out in probably a couple of weeks time so it's all good it's all good and um, so anyway listen I've not really got anything specific to really talk about but because uh, last week um, I did a, a video with uh, with Dave Lone Boys Post 1975 there was no I didn't get a chance to answer any questions and then the week before when I did the I did the live waffle with Lacosa again. I didn't ask. I didn't get a chance to answer any questions. So I've got a couple of sheets. I did treat myself to a new printer, so I've got a couple of sheets here of questions. So I'm just going to kind of batter straight in. Now kicking it off is uh, Dale Boy. At Christmas, when I lived alone and could not visit family, I tried to fill the void with a personal retro gift to myself, like a game to delve into, or hardware to play or learn about. Excuse, oh, excuse me, you got burpees. Looking back at your holiday seasons, did you do something similar? And if so, what was your best retro game hardware holiday? Um, I couldn't say I actually did tell. I mean, I've no. I mean, I've uh, this year. I'm, I'm not. I mean, this year I am going to my girlfriend's house. But I mean, this is the first year, Kenny, when I am going to be on my own. I mean, I've got my daughter. Uh, I mean, I'm recording this on Christmas Eve, so I've got my daughter tonight, and then tomorrow, uh, she'll be going back to her mum's tomorrow, and then I'm going to my girlfriend's on Christmas Day. Um, but, I mean, I've never I've never been alone in Christmas, um, which I'm glad about, um, but if I'm being honest, would it really bother me that much, being on my own at Christmas? I don't think so, because I've got to say, I mean, that's, in fact, that's one thing I wanted to kind of just touch on. 
And I was talking to Panther, I, I phoned Panther uh, earlier on today when I was coming back for work. I was just talking about just what an absolutely awesome community in this thing is, you know, the, the main, Meister, when I say the main Meister channel, I mean, it's, it's although I'm the, the front, I'm the face of main Meister, I am main Meister, um, it's the people that make the community and I think I am so blessed to have everybody in it, um, it's just wicked, I mean, there was, there was one comment in the Friday walk, not the Friday waffle, in the live stream last week, Dell uh, meant just happened to mention in the chat about he was going to be spending Christmas on his own. And uh, Catherine, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, uh, guys. Catherine, who's one of the you know she watches, she always watches the the channel. She said that if it wasn't for you know the isolation aspect the restrictions we've got, that Dell would have been welcome to go to hers for something to eat you know, for Christmas dinner, I just thought that is such a nice thing, you know, people that go on about the internet and say it's a bad place and it's it's full of trolls and all that kind of stuff, yeah, there is a lot of, you know, arseholes out there, but the internet is a wonderful, wonderful thing as well, and, you know, I think that my channel and the people that are involved in it is a is testament to just how nice people can be, and, you know, so I would like to think that none of us are on our own. Yeah, you might be sharing, you might be a, sharing a house on your own, you might be in a house on your own, but you're never, you're never far away from having somebody to talk to, whether it's on a live stream or whatever. Um, you know, seriously, I think it's an absolutely fantastic little community. So, uh, but to get back to the question you're, you're, an, uh, you're asking, Dale, again, as I've mentioned before, I, uh, I've never been bought any video games or computers I've never had any bought for me. I've always had to buy them myself, so I don't have any real video game related Christmas stories um, to talk of. I mean, so any any hardware purchase, it's always myself that buys it, you know, nobody's ever really bought me hardware. Um, and it's one of these things, if I want something and I can afford it, then I'll go and buy it. Um, I mean, this year, I've treated myself, what did I treat myself to? I treated myself to the, the my new meme cam, which is just awesome. Love that so much. Um, what else? Yeah, the VR, the VR, um, which is, again, superb. I was I was slightly annoyed at a couple of the comments. Um, Del Boy and myself, um, we were talking a couple of weeks ago, in fact, what was it? I can't remember. Yeah, you know what it was. It was Lone Boy's post, um, the video I made last week. And we were talking about VR. And there was a couple of comments just saying, no, you know what? It's a gimmick. Now, I completely disagree with that. A gimmick to me is something which you see and you go, oh my God, that's brilliant. And then after five minutes, you're bored rigid. Well, VR is not a gimmick, trust me. It's not for everybody at all. You know, it really isn't. But to say it's a gimmick, I think, is a lot of nonsense. And then there was a second comment that uh, was arguing with me, saying that it is a gimmick and people who buy it have got more money than sense. Well, I'm afraid to say that is complete bollocks because A, I don't have more money than sense. You know, I work really, really hard for my money. Um, everything I own, I've bought out my own money through working. And I certainly don't have a lot of money at all. Um, I do sell a lot of things to buy things. And uh, I think the VR was no different. Um, and so to come out with such a ridiculous statement like more money than sense, it's not for you. I mean, it's like a football season ticket. I would not, if somebody offered me a, a season ticket to Man United for £10, I wouldn't take it because I'm not interested. But I wouldn't dream of saying to somebody, or oh, that £500 or whatever it is, you must have more money than sense. You need to appreciate that not everybody has the same interests as you. And just because somebody chooses to have an interest that you don't have an interest in, I don't think you've got any right to say you must have more money than sense. You know, um, so anyway, no uh, grudges. But uh, yeah, just kind of things like that kind of do annoy me a wee bit. Um, but uh, yeah, so good question anyway, Dylan. Thanks for that. 
Next is Yoldi Gamer Steve. Uh, firstly, Steve, I hope you're feeling better, buddy. I know you were a wee bit under the weather, uh, and your absence was noted. Um, you know, I noticed there was you weren't really commenting in Discord, and your absence was uh, was noted on uh, the Sunday live stream. So, uh, what one question would you like to ask all your mates? Notice I don't say fans. <laughs> I absolutely detest when I hear. YouTube creators calling their their subscribers or their viewers fans. Really? Really? <laughs> People watch my channel because they quite enjoy the stuff that I talk about. They're not a fan of me, they're a fan of the the things that get discussed, whether that's me and my own, whether it's the games that I'm featuring whether it's Lacosa, Panther, Del Boy, whoever, you know, it's, to call it fans is just so preposterous, can't stand that. What one question would you like to ask your mates? I'm going to have, I'm going to ask, I'm going to be cheeky and go for two. Now one of them is being a wee bit self-indulgent. And that will become apparent when I ask it. I would like to know why do you enjoy my channel? Second one would be, would you like to have your own channel? There you go, that's my two questions. Um, it'd be fantastic if you could pop your answers down below. Thanks, uh, thanks Steve. And Panther UK, meme aside, what do you consider to be the best standalone and well implemented emulator? Now that's a fairly easy one uh, for myself. Now, my answer is not going to be the emulator that emulates the system that I like the most. I mean, it would probably be, I'd probably go for like Vice because it plays the C64 or WinUAE because it plays Amiga. It's not the system, it's more about what one is the best, the most streamlined, the most user-friendly um, emulator. And uh, it would 100% have to be Kega Fusion, written by my mate Steve, Steve Snake. It's, I mean, Steve wrote that quite a number of years ago. I don't think it's been updated for probably about 10 years. The reason being is it doesn't need to be updated. It is, it is quite literally perfection. I mean, it, it's a drag and drop. You can just drag ROMs across and it'll load it. I think it's drag and drop. But anyway, if it's not, in fact, I'm, I'm sure it is. If I'm not doesn't matter, it's, you can basically load up ROMs. Stop telling me my iPad is not being backed up. Seriously, this bug, it keeps coming up with that. I don't, I don't want to back it up, it keeps telling me that. Um, anyway, yeah, Kega Fusion. It just, it runs games flawlessly. It's got really nice uh, CRT options. It's got, uh, it just, it plays everything perfectly. And it also, I mean, it's, it, uh, it works with Game Gear, it works with the Master System, it works with the Genesis, Mega Drive, the 32X, and also the Mega CD. It's just, it's an absolute fantastic emulator. Um, yeah, it's, it's the emulator that everybody uses. Unless you're running it, you know, you're running uh, an emulator on like Android. If you're running it on Windows, then I would guarantee that Kega Fusion is going to be the one that you use, because it's, it's just a... It's a superb uh, emulator, it really, really is. Uh, Ian Hunter, with the wealth of retro games at our disposal today, how much would it bother you if Sony, Microsoft and Nintendo went bust tomorrow? Honestly, Ian, it wouldn't really bother me. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, that's a bit shit coming from a, a video gamer. I would prefer if it didn't happen, because I like to see, I like the fact that We've still got all this new technology, and although I don't really play new systems, I still like the fact that I, I still get excited, you know, um, waiting to see what's going to be made. Um, but from a personal point of view, it wouldn't if if they stop making video games tomorrow or today, it wouldn't affect me one little bit because I've just got so many games to play, and the games that I play are ones that I've had for years. Um, you know, I very, very rarely buy new games. But I, I don't want that to happen because I think 
it would be a sad day if one of these companies went bust because then it would mean there was a bit of fucking a monopoly. You know, if Sony went out of the game, then it'd be all Microsoft and the same with Nintendo. So I do like the fact that these three companies still exist. Um, yeah, I would love to see Sega return to the uh, return to the fold with video games, but I don't think that's ever ever going to happen. Down the rabbit hole. <clears throat> Uh, first, have you seen the Highlander playing the Port of Berserk made by Electric Adventures for the C64? It looks right up your alley. Actually, uh, Kev, I did. Well, I hadn't until I read your question and I went and watched uh, the Highlander's uh, video. And I've got to say, I mean, uh, Electric Adventures, I can't remember his, I can't remember his uh, first name, but uh, yeah, he's got, he's got a really nice, uh, nice YouTube channel. Is it Tim? A big apologies if I've got, got got his name wrong. I don't think he watches my channel. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean he's he's got a, a really nice YouTube channel. He's uh, got a fantastic collection of games. He's got an awesome awesome uh, games room. But he's also very talented. He programs. I'm sure he's written games for like the Coleco Vision. Uh, and yeah, he's basically put out a. No wait a minute. Hang on a second. Now, apologies if I'm uh, if I've got this wrong. I was sure the port was for the Coleco Vision. Was it not for the Coleco Vision? I'm sure it is. You know what, Kev? If I've got that wrong, I certainly watched the Highlander playing um, Electric Adventures game, and I thought it was the Coleco Vision. Anyway, you know what? It doesn't matter if it's the C64. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's a nice version, though the movement and the shooting of the bullets is completely inaccurate. I mean, I would I would class myself as a bit of a... I think I know what I'm talking about when it comes to Berserk. I've played it often enough, so I do kind of know the movement. I know, you know, what's accurate and what's not accurate. If you want to play the, the best home port, of Berserk, then it is 100% Horus in the Robots, and again, it's written by my mate Steve Snake for the Spectrum. It is, it is almost arcade perfect. It's got the same, same aspect ratio, you know, resolution. Um, if you use the, the color speech thing, you can use that uh, on an emulator. It's, uh, it's got the speech. It is an utterly, utterly amazing port. I mean, it is literally arcade perfect. Um, but yeah, I did watch the video, and it's it's very impressive. But it's it's not accurate. The movement of the guys, the way they fire and that kind of stuff, it's not accurate. But uh, you know what? It's a nice. It's still a nice game, and I have a lot of respect for anybody that can even write anything like that. Secondly, I recall you got a Raspberry Pi a few years ago, and I was just curious if you still use it and what it's mostly used for. <laughs> have I got a Raspberry Pi? Um, I've got, oh blimey, I must have about, I've got one which, I think it's a Raspberry Pi 2, which I used to run an emulator on for the Amiga. I've got, uh, it's actually right here, I've got this bad boy, which was made for me by Mike Hansen. Superb stick, um, it's got, it's got a Raspberry Pi 3 inside it, and all I do is I plug it in there, HDMI, plug the thing in, um, I mean look at that, he's, he's made it in the style of an old Atari, the old kind of wooden effect, so that's got a Raspberry Pi 3 in it, I've also got, in fact let's have a wee look, I've also got a Raspberry Pi 4, Ta -da. now I did buy that, uh, when did I buy that, I bought that when it came out, quite a long time ago, and the, the thing was, RetroPie would not run in it, so it basically sat in a drawer for about six months. But they've now there's now some really nice images for the the, the Raspberry Pi four. So I've got that, and then a purchase that I made maybe about a month ago, two months ago, thanks to uh, Sir Lancelot on the channel. It's a Pi four hundred. It's basically it's a Raspberry Pi four, and it's inside a keyboard. So I bought that recently, and uh, my good mate Alan, Alan Brown, G GTB Films on uh, Discord and also on YouTube, he, uh, excuse me, he very kindly gave me a, he sent me an image 
on an SD card, it's uh, it's basically it turns your uh, your Raspberry Pi four into an Amiga. So I've got that. So yeah, you can probably tell Kev what the next part of that answer is going to be. I use it one hundred percent for games. I mean, uh, I'm not clever enough to use it as a computer, but you know the fact that you can. I mean that Pi whatever it is, 400, I can't remember how much it was, I think it was about 90 quid, but that's for a standalone computer, you know, the fact that it's a computer, you just plug in the HDMI, plug in the power and away you go, it's just awesome. So yeah, I absolutely love my Raspberry Pis, they're amazing little devices, and you know, for emulation, it's, it's the dog's bollocks, it's so simple, you know, configure your joystick and away you go, so fantastic. And finally, have you ever had a major YouTuber leave a comment on one of your videos and then bubbles it up? I have twice. Two big YouTubers left me a comment and I made a joke assuming it was a, a troll pretending to be this person and neither of them ever said a word to me again making me worry it was really this person and I may have insulted them. Ah well, lesson learned I suppose. Um, I can't say I have. You know what Kev, it's... I don't get, and I'm not, I'm not crying about this, but I do not get any support from any big YouTube channels. Um, I mean, I do watch quite a few, quite a few YouTube channels. Um, you know, the retro ones, and they, I, I, I don't think they watch my channel. I mean, if I comment on their videos and live streams, they always, they know me as Meme Meister. They do know who I am, um, but they don't. They never ever, they never comment. It would be nice if they did because then you think, oh, well, at least they watch your channel. But uh, yeah, they never, they never comment at all. Um, so I mean, the people, and that doesn't bother me, the people that do comment are the people that matter. They're people that actually support the channel and watch it. Um, but no, I mean, I've, I've had, I've not had any, like, you know, I don't like using the word big YouTuber, a YouTuber who happens to have a bit more subscribers than you and I. I've had a few, uh, sort of, well, I say famous people commenting. I mean, when I did the, the Dino Eggs video, the guy that wrote Dino Eggs commented, when I did a video about Formula One by CRL and the, the Spectrum, he commented. I've had a few comments from programmers um, of games that I've, uh, I've mentioned, and that's always nice. And I also had uh, Martin Galway, he commented on, uh, I think it was my C64 loaders, uh, the, the history of the C64 loader, the turbo loader, Martin uh, commented on that and I kind of jumped in and I, I tried to introduce myself and says, oh, it'd be great if you want to come on the channel and uh, it didn't happen. Talking of that, just before I forget, if you're a fan, or not if a fan, if you've ever, if you're an old, old style gamer, you may remember the original uh, Imagine software. I'm not talking about the Imagine that brought out Year Kung Fu and Mikey and Hypersports. I'm talking about the original Imagine, the Imagine that made all these really pants games. Um, well, mostly pants games. <laughs> and uh, they, all the programmers were driving about in Ferraris and they basically, they made a shitload of money over a very short space of time and then they went bankrupt very quickly. Now, one of the guys, uh, John Gibson, um, he got a beard and he was he was known as Grandad. He was one of the programmers that worked with Eugene uh, Evans. Uh, he was working on the, the mega games, Cyclops and Bandersnatch. And uh, anyway, John, uh, how did I find out about it? it? His name popped up on, uh, on you not on YouTube, on Facebook. So I dropped him a message and he got back to me and I've asked him if he would like to uh, come on the channel for an interview, but he said that at the moment he's had enough, he's kind of had his stomach full of uh, making, making, uh, talking about the old days. So I did say to him, I said, look, I completely understand, you know, I appreciate where you're coming from, but if you do decide you're going to do an interview, you need to make sure it's the, the main Meister channel. So with any luck, I'll be getting him on next year. Um, I think it would be a fascinating interview. I'd love to have him on because I would love to know the whole history of uh, Imagine and, you know, was it true about the Ferraris and, you know, Eugene Evans. I mean, Eugene Evans, if you don't know who he is, if 
If you've ever played Manic Miner, I think he's level five of Manic Miner, Eugene Slayer. That's based on that uh, that programmer. So, yeah, it'd be fantastic to get John Gibson on. Um, that would be really, really good. But, uh, yeah, so I, I've never had, that I'm aware, I've never had a big YouTuber comment before uh, Kev. But, uh, yeah, don't forget, mate, they're no different for you and I, mate. They've just been around a bit longer. That's something that's simple as that. And uh, back to Dale Boy. Uh, a developer approaches you to develop a shoot 'em up called Oh Bollocks <laughs> with the pilot called Meme Meister. What sort of features would you like it to have? Classic single screen, side scroller, modern graphics, retro graphics. Well, it would all be. I don't like using the phrase retro graphics. It would be like Space Invaders or, you know, Galaxian or. Maybe do Dodo and Patchy, something like that. Yeah, beautiful coloured uh, hand drawn graphics. I would love it. You know what? I'd absolutely love it to have. I would love it to have a mixture of a bit of Defender. I would love it to have a bit of Robotron, and I would love it to have a bit of vertical shooters as well. Um, I think that'd be awesome. So there would be a bit of twin stick as well. Um, some power ups. Uh, yeah, obviously when you die, it's are uh, bollocks. Um, now people think that I, I just say that for effect. It's natural. <laughs> and that's what I say. Uh, and it's quite funny. It's kind of it's become the thing that I'm associated for. Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it would, it would have to be, it'd be a shoot 'em up uh, deal and it would have a mix, a mixture of kind of game types. Right, next is Multi Swinbuckle. <clears throat> If you could program any computer and you were an expert at everything needed in the game, uh, be it design, graphics, sound effects, music, AI, animation, etc., and one day you decided to make your own game, my question is this, what type of game would you make? Would you try and make something unique, perhaps something uh, creating something never seen before in VR, um, or would you instead take on an old favourite type game? jazz it up a bit so it looked more like a modern day game and then add some stuff that wouldn't have been possible years before. Another interesting question and it's it's obviously kind of, it ties in with the, what Dell was talking about. I mean, it would probably be, it would most definitely in fact be a shoot 'em up. And again, yeah, I, I think it would have to be a kind of fast paced action type game um, possibly be with a bit of uh, platform stuff flung in I think I think it would be yeah it would be more definitely going to be more arcade like Defender Robotron with uh, yeah lots of loud sound effects and uh, some real kind of like fireworks going off you know lots of kind of lots of colours uh, yeah, my type of game basically. So it would definitely be it would be a shoot 'em up, and it would definitely be old style. I've I wouldn't I've not got any interest in making a new game. Could I even think of any new type of game? Is there any game that I think I would love? Uh, I don't know. I can I take on Pipeline Super Pipeline Two something like that. Um, just, I don't know, an arcade game. I'm not doing a very good job explaining this, but yeah, it would have to be an arcade game, a fast-paced arcade game, a game you can just pick up and play. So, yeah, thank you very much, Milfy. And uh, Dale Boy again, upscale or remaster, what do you prefer? SD or uh, upscale or remaster? You know what, Dale? I'm really not bothered. I mean, you know, I think you've probably guessed by now that uh, I'm not really, graphics, HD graphics don't really excite me at all. Um, so, you know what, I mean, it wouldn't really bother me. I mean, I suppose if, if, if they were going to bring out a game, see, I mean, a game that I've always said I'd quite like to see it done would be Way of Exploding Fist. I think that would be quite nice to actually see with super realistic graphics but it's got to have the same music it's got to look like the c64 but just enhanced 
I would rather, rather than the upscaling the graphics, I think I'd prefer to actually see them kind of hand-drawn or whatever it is, however they're going to do it. So yeah, I think probably doing it, probably a remaster I think I'd prefer. I mean, there's a few remastered games that have light. Um, Resident Evil 4, love the original game and, you know, playing it on the PC or uh, PlayStation 4, it just looks, it just looks even nicer. SD or HD? Are there times it's not worth it? Again, it doesn't even, even watching television. I mean, for years and years and years, I was quite happily watching SD. And I would gladly watch a film in SD. But now, I don't think you can really, I don't think you can get um, SD at all. But if I'm watching films, I mean, I've got some mates that they'll not watch anything less than like 4K. It doesn't bother me at all. You know, I'll quite happily watch a, a 480 or a 720, whatever it is, doesn't bother me at all. Think games and media for this and understand the costs come into it um, a lot in the discussions. Would you prefer paying more to remaster it or is upscale, which is cheaper, good enough? Like I says, Dale, I think, you know, if it was a game that I really wanted to see made for the modern market, I think I'd prefer, I'd prefer a, a proper remake rather than just kind of upscaling it. And finally, from Dale again, what racing game would the team say moved the genre forward and why? What racing game? Um, that's an interesting one. I mean, as, uh, f for me personally, I suppose the defining moment, the real game changer was when the PlayStation came along and... Uh, Ridge Racer came out. I mean, we we were playing games on our PC. Uh, you know, we were playing stuff like Lotus Turbo Challenge, which you know, in Amiga is they're awesome games, absolutely amazing games. And then to go from that, you know, a sprite based game, and then jumping into full polygons like Ridge Racer. I mean, when I when I was playing Ridge Racer on my my PlayStation, you really felt like you had arcade in your living room. It was just that it was such a big game changer, amazing. So, I would probably say Ridge Racer. That really, really just stepped it up, and you know, we've kind of built for there. I mean, racing games, racing games are probably the one genre that it's insane when you look at when you look at. Uh, Compare a racing game from like 30 years ago, I don't know, say pole position then, look at it, compare it to like Forza Horizon, it's just insane, absolutely insane, just, you know, how it's changed. Are they better? Not at all. <laughs> Same question, uh, what shoot 'em up moved the genre forward the most? Well, you know what, I don't really think any shoot em up has moved the genre forward because I wouldn't really I wouldn't really thank you for playing a shoot em up that came out in the last 10 years I mean you know shoot em ups now would be sort of third person or first person I'm old school I mean I suppose you would have to say what, what would be the first shoot em up that had power ups I suppose something like Gradius 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 Um. Gradius, or, or what do you call it, a uh, Nemesis, which is the, I think that's the, the European name. Yeah, that was, I think that was one of the first games to introduce power-ups. But uh, the one for me that really kind of just, again, I suppose from a graphical point of view, it just it really holed it up massively. And it's not a game that everybody loves. It's uh, R-Type. I mean, I love R-Type. The power-ups are just beautiful looking. The graphics are amazing looking. Um, so yeah, that kind of built on the Nemesis uh, game engine. But uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of, I, I can't even, has there been a decent shoot 'em up that's come out in the last 10 years? There's a couple, I can't remember offhand, there has been a couple of indie games, um, I really can't remember what it's called. There has been a couple of really nice uh, shoot 'em ups that came out in Steam. Uh, and I think they're ported to the PS4 as well. Can't remember for the life of me what it was. Um, but uh, and Dell's last one is I think a good discussion question though. Being arcade uh, or home version related. Oh, sorry, that that's referring to the the, uh, the that previous question. Oh no, sorry, I'm, I'm not. I've just missed that. I beg your pardon. Sorry. 
both difficult questions as you have single screen to scrolling screens. Yeah, well that's it again. I think as much as I, I love Galaxian and Space Invaders, you know, I wouldn't want to play them for any length of time. So if I, I'm going to play a shoot 'em up, you know, I do love my uh, my scroll and shoot 'em ups. Yeah, hard types in that case. But uh, anyway, listen, um, that's quite enough waffle for one day. I will be uh, coming along tomorrow, which is going to be Sunday. Sunday night, uh, let me think. Yeah, Sunday night, I'm going to be doing. Let me think. I'm just trying to think this through. Yeah, why don't we go for 7 o'clock? It's going to be the usual time, 7 o'clock on Sunday, tomorrow. Well, it depends when you're watching this. You might be watching this a year from now, in which case you've missed it. Um, yeah, Sunday night, 7 o'clock. I'm not going to say how long I'm going to stream for, but because I don't have work in the morning, let's just say it'll probably run on for three, four hours. But I'm going to go back to any system, any game. I don't really want you to... Uh... Well, yeah, you know what? Stick, if you're in Discord, um, update the, uh, the, the Google Docs thing. Any game at all, you know, C64, Spectrum... Amstrad, Atari, Sega, Mega Drive, SNES, Arcade, MAME, you name it, you put the game in and I'll play it. So that's going to be Sunday, 7 o'clock until 10, 11 o'clock. We'll just see how it goes. Anyway guys, listen, I'm going to get off. I better let you go away and watch or listen to the Queen's speech. I hope, you all, I hope you're all having an absolutely fantastic uh, Christmas day. And uh, you're staying safe. And I said, I look forward to catching up with you guys uh, next week and, well, hopefully tomorrow night as well. And as always, guys, thank you very, very much to everybody that supports me. As I've said again, if you're a new subscriber, please, please, please let me know how you found out about the channel because I'm interested to know why my sub numbers have increased. I think it's personally, I think it's a, a, a blip in the system. Anyway, guys, as always, Take care, Merry Christmas and as always thank you very very much for watching.